What's up, guys? Welcome back to the first coaches corner of the new uh, of the new year of actually 24. It's the first one we are doing. It's for Douglas Luis because he has been announced announced officially as a Juve player. So uh, as usual on the channel, we we're going to talk about the player now. Usually, Julian uh, does the coaches corner, but well, uh, he's not here, so I will give it a go. Um, telling people in advance, I'm not into stats that much so it could be a complete disaster i'm gonna go off a few basic stuff uh things i've just seen uh or observed watching him uh, play for aston villa sample size not the biggest but that's usually what happens with players um overseas you know you watch more of syria uh, and you watch more of like big european games and aston villa um, doesn't they didn't play Champions League football and all those things, so you kind of miss out of, on those players. Uh, but yeah, I will, I will, I will give it uh, my best uh, with Douglas Luiz, who is uh, a confusing signing maybe for some because um, he wasn't a priority, kind of came out of nowhere, and we made that deal happen very, very soon, like very quickly. It moved. Uh, it moved quick. It really did. And when there was a hiccup in the negotiation with McKenny not willing to join, um, and potentially some were like, okay, the deal is dead in the water. The club find a new solution, kind of showing that they really wanted Douglas Luiz, even if it was an opportunity that they didn't discuss um, at the end of May when they set out the, the like the the guidelines for the summer. It kind of shows that they still were sold on Douglas Luiz and they thought, you know, this is an opportunity we can definitely not miss out on. So we need to make that deal happen. And that's what they did. They signed Douglas Luiz with the approval um, of uh, Thiago Mota, which is key, obviously, with every single signing we make this summer, uh, especially with potential key signings. Uh, not so much about squad players, uh, but he is going to be a key signing because Douglas Luiz... Um, for the people who watch him play, like defensively, he's not like if if you're gonna look at his defensive stats and you can see them on the screen, he's not that player. Like he is not a player that will will make you like because I saw people saying uh, Vidal like Vidal did it all. You know, attacking, defending, it was unbelievable. He's not that. He will never be that. Uh, if you want to make that comparison, uh, because defensively he is not. He's not the best. You know, he is not the best. Um, he's a high-energy player, in my opinion. Uh, if you have somebody around him who not follows him, but kind of mops up for him, he will be amazing. He will be amazing. You know, if you ask him to actually defend as well, um, it could become a problem. And with defend, I don't mean basic stuff. I mean, like, literally sitting a bit deeper, you know, and shielding off play, not really going forward, then I think he will be a disaster. I think he's better when he has somebody around him who will do that task and will kind of mop up a little bit, just in general, not for him. Uh, I think at that stage, he will be a very good player. He's high energy from what I've seen. He loves to pop up in the box. Uh, I know what Hanin follower is going to say. His stats look through the roof in certain aspects because he takes set pieces and all. It is true. Um, it's not an issue because uh, set pieces are part of football. It cannot be a key part like we tried to do in the past seasons where it was all set pieces or just moments of brilliance. Uh, but it's it's a good attribute to have, you know, being good at set pieces. I thought uh, at times it was poor, you know, Kostic season before, brilliant. You know, set pieces or actually one touch crossing, which for me is a set piece uh, uh, for him. Um, we kind of struggle with that. So I think that's uh, an added value going forward, attacking wise. I think that's where his strengths uh, lie. Besides, like things you can not really measure, and what I think is like high intensity. If you can see, if you look at his touches, uh, most of them are or a lot of them are up the field, uh, in my opinion, um, or like more than some might expect, you know, um, because he pops, like if you watch Aston Villa a couple of games, especially in top games, which is when people probably watch Aston Villa more so than, you know, than playing Brentford, for example. Uh, but when he played Arsenal and those type of themes, at times it feels like he is an added uh, attacker because he pops up in the box, he's in around the box consistently, and on the ball, he's good. He's decent, you know, uh, I thought McKenny 
is a player who likes to be in around the box, but on the ball, technically, he's a very limited player, which kind of uh, stopped, you know, certain movements he actually could have made. You know, with McKenney, it's like when he reaches a certain level on the pitch, you know, and that can be, um, I'm going to say like halfway midfield, uh, then for me, he, for him, it becomes an issue because everything becomes needs to be so simple and that's where I think he hurts himself, but also the team. Douglas Ruiz is the kind of opposite of that. He knows what to do with the ball. He can skip by players, um, and he's just good on the ball. So that's the player I think you're going to uh, have, get, excuse me. As you can see, uh, take-ons, he likes to do that. Uh, he likes to do that quite often. Doesn't really lose possession that much, if I'm being completely honest, uh, because for a player, or the way he plays... And again, not the biggest sample size I've watched. I was expecting more uh, possession loss, if I'm being completely honest, because at times it looks a bit over the top. It looks like a lot of energy and not so like not so focused on, okay, I need to keep the ball, I cannot lose the ball. That's how he comes across. So the stat actually uh, is quite surprising. I thought it was, I was expecting it to be much, much worse. So I think that's a positive. Uh, the defensive side, like I said, like he's he's not a defensive player, you know, and you don't you're not you were not you don't need to expect that from him. You cannot expect that from him. I think Thiago Mota is gonna expect that from him. Uh, I think you can complain about that because that can some that can be something that you're gonna hate down the line. But if you're gonna hate it, I also think you need are gonna need to make peace with it because he's not he's not gonna change. Um, the way he plays he's not going to change overnight he's not going to be a defensive strong point stronghold he's never going to be that so you're going to need to take that with you because it is what it is like it's just what it is if you can see at his stats i mean if you compare that with certain players you don't like mckenny rabio you're like what what's this because it looks completely out of place but if you look at other stats you're like okay it's a completely different player. So people need to know that, yes, he comes in for McKenney, like squat-wise, but they're not the same players. They, they bring the completely different things to the table. So defensively, um, he, he's just not it. You know, that's why I said at the beginning, I think he's better when he has a player around him, you know, kind of mops up for him. Uh, maybe even in a two, I don't know about that because I don't know how Mota's going to play, but you cannot leave him alone out there because it, at times it probably will cost you it will cost you just the way he plays the way he is so uh, we need to take that into account now because i said uh, mckenny and the kind of comparison with mckenny squat wise um i picked up a few stats and these are the things that kind of bothered me with mckenny personally you know through balls switching play uh, even crosses, even though McKenny kind of improved on that last season, just passes attempted, uh, completed passes. I, I I left out the 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 how do you want to say, the yardage or whatever you want to call it of passes because it, it was sad for McKenny. Uh, but as you can see, it's completely different. Like it's day and night. Douglas Luiz is good on the ball. He can play a pass over 20, 30, 40 meters. If you watch that McKenny. He needed to drive and actually bring the ball to his teammates rather than playing that 30, 40 meter pass, even on the ground. Like he never did that. And that was a big issue. You know, when you're on a counterattack or you need to dismantle a team and you have a player like McCannion and even Rabio as well, who take years to play a pass, you know, who like to take a thousand touches before they do the most simple thing. It is frustrating and it kind of hinders you. This is what I was missing in a player, in our midfield. Players who actually want to play, want to play football, who actually are not scared to make that pass, you know, which at times I feel McKenny was scared because he knew he was limited and Allegri came out and he said so, you know, that they discussed that. So that's a big upgrade, 100%. That's a, that's a massive upgrade uh, on uh, what we already have. Uh, again, defensively, it is what it is. On the ball, attacking-wise, it's a much, much, much needed improvement. And now, because we are signing uh, Turam, and I will make a video on Turam as well, or try to do my best to make a video on Turam. Um, 
I compared both again um, because I think the debate was a lot of other similar players you're going to get. I think they're not similar. I think uh, Douglas Luiz is more high intensity attacking wise. Thuram is good defensively. He doesn't really get bullied off the ball. Um, he can drive the ball. He's not scared to take passes. He's good on the ball. Decent, you know, and not amazing, but like decent for his stature. But he is more of a Rabiot mold where, again, I've said it a couple of weeks ago, when he takes a few steps, it feels like he take, took 100 steps. So are there similar players? Not not really, you know. Uh, I think, again, attacking-wise, Douglas Luiz is much better, you know, and he will be throughout his career because that's a player he is. Thuram, not so. You know, and again, I think Turam for now is more of an added piece, and we will see where that will go. Rather than okay, it's Douglas Ruiz, and he's probably going to be one of the main guys or a starter uh, very, very soon. So, on the signing, no issue with that. You know, but in Chea, I, I still I'm pissed about losing him, even Junior. But we're never gonna. That was clear that Junior was not going to be part of the club. Um, it's a shame that we moved on Barnicea rather than McKenny because that would have solved the problem. I don't think Barnicea would be a problem for the club. I think they would have kept Barnicea. Maybe they wouldn't have signed Turam. I don't know about that. Um, but the deal is a deal. The deal has been done. I have nothing against Douglas Luiz. I like him. Uh, I'm not going to go overboard. I'm not going to hype the you know, what out of him. I'm not going to call him out for his limitations because that's who he is. It's just on Thiago Mota now to use him and scheme him in the best way, you know, because last season, that was probably the issue with certain players. They were not schemed in the best way, you know, and they were doing things they shouldn't be doing, and it looked poor, it looked very soulless, and that's what you kind of get. So it's up to uh, to Mota now to make it work. He signed off to the deal uh, for Douglas Luiz, uh, which I'm perfectly fine uh, with. That midfield needed a boost, and it's potentially getting a big boost with three signings, which we kind of needed for ages right now. So that's a good thing. And uh, yeah, can't wait to see him uh, in preseason, very late because he's in the Copa America still. So you'll probably come in, you know, at the start of August. Will he play the first game? We don't know, you know, um, we just need to wait and see, I guess. But good signing. Um, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with that. I'm perfectly fine with the signing. So let me know in the comments what you think. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will talk to you very soon. Ciao.